I'm going to continue with our standard game. Um, well, remember, uh, I can do this for any extensive form game and, and for any non-terminal history. Well, this is how we denote it. Uh, this is basically the continuation game. And so what happens is that uh, we still have set of players, histories, player function, uh, probability distribution of the nature, information partition, and the payoff functions, but they all are constraint uh, uh, versions. So in this example, I will basically find out, so, so this is a, a game uh, that I have. I would like to find this uh, continuation game. Well, for my example, I selected history as L itself. Well, if H is the empty set, meaning the null history, well, then uh, the uh, uh, continuation, continuation game and the game itself are exactly the same, right? Because it, uh, it basically imposes no con sorry, constraint. However, what if history is equal to L? Well, that basically means the following. The intuition is the following. You will assume that players, uh, I mean, here, player one, played already action L, all right? So then the question is, what does the rest of the game will look like, all right? So whenever you figure out all those sets, and uh, later we are going to calculate uh, sort of continuation strategies, all you have to do is just ignore everything regarding the rest of the game, meaning everything regarding player one or starting with player one playing R, right? So I will basically focus on this part of the game. All right, well, later we are gonna call it sub game, but not all continuation games are sub games, all right? So it has to satisfy some extra properties. All right, so what is the set of players that are going to act in the continuation game? Well, after L, player two will move and then player one will move. So you know what? Uh, the set of players will not uh, change. Well, what about the set of histories after uh, uh, history H, uh, history L. Well, first of all, the history L itself, right, uh, is, is a consistent history with L. Well, what else? LX. What else? LY. Because the beginning of all those histories uh, start with L. Well, what else? Uh, let me close it because I don't want to go uh, further. Uh, I have L. XB, the terminal histories, LXF, um, and then anything else, LYB, uh, and then finally LYF. Okay, so I have two, four, six, seven uh, total histories in this constraint set. Okay, well, obviously I'm going to erase some of those because I need to open some space here. Well, what about the player function? Well, simple. Remember, player function basically maps each info set to a player. Well, here, um, maybe I should, I should first talk about the uh, information um, um, partition first then. So what is the information partition? Well, for player two, there's only one information set and it basically is uh, history L. What about for player two? Player two has only one information set in the continuation game after history L. Well, in this, uh, remember how we write uh, the information partition. Uh, well, there are two histories uh, belong to this info set. One of them is LX and the other one is LY. All right. Well, obviously, terminal histories can never be part of uh, so I close this entire set. Uh, terminal histories can never be part of information partition. So there are two information partition, uh, two information set, one for player two and one for player one. So therefore the player function, uh, its domain has two elements, right? Uh, in this info set, who is uh, making a choice? Well, player two. Well, what about in this info set, let's call it I uh, of player one. All right, so I don't want to rewrite it, it's too long. Well, it's player one, so that's it. Well, what about the actions available for player one after history L? Well, I mean, just look at this part of the game. It's B and F, right? Pretty straightforward. Well, for player two, it's X and Y. 
So you know what, what are the set of uh, uh, strategies, pure strategies for player one? Remember, pure strategy is a function which maps each information set of player one to an available action at that info set. Well, player one has only one info set, two available actions, so two to the power one, so he has two available strategies. So how do I write them? Well, I can write them, for example, B and F. All right, in, in short, well, for player two, she has two, I mean, sometimes I call them he, sometimes I call them she, I hope that that doesn't confuse you. Uh, so she has two strategies, X and Y. All right, so mixed strategies are basically probability distribution over those two, okay? Well, what I'm going to do next is uh, how do we constrain, uh, I'm sorry, how do we find continuation strategies given a, a strategy? I selected three pure strategy for player one and two pure strategy for player two. Uh, later, I will use them to create my mixed uh, strategies. Um, well, suppose that player one strategy is L, B, C, all right? L here, B here, and C here. Well, what is the continuation strategy? <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, what is the continuation strategy after history H, which is equal to L, all right? Well, it means what would player one play if it happens to be he played L in the first round? Well, according to this strategy, he was supposed to play B. So therefore, this is nothing but B, all right? So I can just uh, simply denote it as uh, B. Well, here S1 prime is RBC. Well, he was supposed to play R, but the thing is, I don't care. According, remember, um, a strategy is a contingency plan. I mean, even though uh, you're planning to play, uh, you're planning to play R. You have to specify. The player must specify what he would play if he, in fact, wanted to deviate to L. All right. So, why do we do this sort of, you know, weird uh, the description of strategy? Well, here is the reason because we can now define uh, what's called continuation strategies, and later we're going to use them because we would like to check those strategies are forming subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. We're not there yet, but uh, let's focus on. Uh, driving uh, continuation strategies. Well, here, well, regardless of what he would play in, in the first, uh, uh, at the beginning of the game, if it happens that the game uh, uh, sort of, uh, you know, comes to this information set, his intention was to play B. So therefore, S1 prime H is also B, all right? Uh, you put bracket or not, uh, doesn't matter, I don't care. And here, uh, S1 double prime H, well, he's intended to play F, so it's F only, all right? Well, what about player two? Oh, they're not equal. S2, uh, the continuation strategy, well, she is supposed to play X in this side of the game according to this strategy, so just X, and according to this strategy, S2 prime H, the continuation strategy is Y, all right? That's it, as simple as that. Well, now let's look at uh, sigma one. All right, so sigma one is a mixed strategy for player one. So he plays the pure strategy S1 with 0.2 probability, S1 prime with 0.4 probability, and S1 double prime with 0.4 probability. So they add up to one. Very good. Well, how would I find sigma one constrained to H? Well, simple. It's 0.2. S1. Well, what is the continuation strategy that, I mean, with probability point two, he was planning to select S1 strategy. So therefore, with probability point two, he is going to continue according to S1. So for that reason, point two probability S1 a continuation strategy, 0.4 probability S1 prime H, and 0.4 probability S1 double prime H. All right, well, what is that? We just calculated those strategies, right? So 0.2 probability, she's gonna play B, he's gonna play B, I'm sorry. 0.4 probability, he's gonna play B again. Huh, so in fact, with 0.6 probability, he's intended to play B. And then with 0.4 probability, he's intended to play F. Well, I'm just summing them up. I can't do that because uh, it says, this guy is gonna play B with 0.2 and 0.4 probability. So, well, that means it's 0.6 probability, he's gonna play B, and with 0.4 probability, he's gonna play F. Well, remember, 
A mixed strategy is a probability distribution over pure strategies. Pure strategies in this uh, continuation game is B and F for player one. And so the 0 0.6 plus 0 0.4 must add up to one. All right, which it does. So very good. We are on the good track. Well, what about sigma two? Well, I need some space. So let's get rid of all this. Uh, oops, let's leave this because I'm going to use them. Uh, well, sigma two, the continuation strategy of sigma two is then with exactly the same reasoning with point two probably she was supposed to play s2 so therefore she will continue according to s2 so s2 h uh, and point eight probability is two prime h well what is that that means s2 h is x so she's going to play 0.2 probability x and 0.8 probability y. So once again, those probabilities now must add up to one, which it does. Very good. Well, now I would like to talk about continuation payoff, expected payoff though, under uh, this mixed strategy profile. All right, so sigma is equal to sigma one comma sigma two. So what is going to, how do we calculate the expected payoff of player one? Uh, symmetrically for player two so I'm gonna leave it as an exercise all right well remember how we calculated expected payoff we basically calculate the probability of each terminal history occurring and then multiply those probabilities with the payoffs at the end of those terminal histories and add them up so the question is what is the likelihood that history uh, L XB is going to occur well remember uh, so, by the way, it looks very much like a, a, a behavioral strategy at this point. So she's going to play 0.2 probability. So let's write them here because life is going to be much easier. And then he is going to play 0.6 probability here and 0.4 probability here and same. So with 0.2 times 0.6, 0.2 times 0.6 probability, she's going to play, uh, 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 they're gonna play X and B, and so her payoff, his payoff is going to be four plus. With 0.2 times 0.4 probability, uh, oops, 0.2 times 0.4 probability, they're gonna end up here at this payoff, minus one plus. With 0.8 times 0.6 probability, so 0.8 times 0.6 probability, they're going to end up again minus one. And then finally, with 0.8 times 0.4, remember F was 0.4. So 0.8 times 0.4 probability, they're gonna end, uh, player one is gonna end up two. So whatever this sum is, uh, I already did the calculation. So let me uh, finish the uh, calculation by giving you the number. So if you do all this, um, what is it equal to? Well, it's equal to 0.4. Okay, so this is how we calculate expected the continuation payoff of player one uh, under this uh, strategy sigma and history H, which is equal to L. Okay, well, we are going to do exactly the same thing for the mixed, uh, I'm sorry, behavioral strategies. So let's do that. I'm not going to, uh, well, let's do that. So what is beta one constrained to history H? Well, by the way, how did I write those um, uh, uh, behavioral strategies? Well, I mean, I just picked the easiest notation for me, so you can follow that as well. The beta one says the following, player one is going to here play L with 0.1 probability, therefore, he's gonna play R with 0.9 probability. All right, this is what beta one says. Later, if the game ever comes to this point, he's gonna play B with 0.2 probability, and therefore, F with 0.8 probability. All right, same here, 0 0.2, 0 0.8. And then finally, if the game comes to this point, however, he's gonna play C with 0.3 probability. Remember, they all are independent probabilities. 0.7, D therefore, so 0 0.3, 0 0.7, that's it. And player two, uh, she's gonna play X with uh, probability six. 
All right, therefore y with probability 4, right, they have to add up to 1 because the only available actions in this information set is x and y. All right, and uh, w, she's going to play w with 0.7 probability, therefore uh, z with probability uh, 0.3. That's it. So what is the restriction of uh, beta 1 to the history L? Well, simple. Player 1 is remember I ignore everything about uh, this game I mean, for this part of the game. So therefore, player one here will only play B or F. And so what is his probability? So he's gonna play with 0.2 probability B. If you want, you can put uh, uh, 0.8 probability F, all right? As you wish. I mean, once you leave it as 0.2 probability B, I know that automatically it has to be 0.8 probability f. So I'm going to leave it this way. Well, what about the continuation strategy of beta 2? Well, it is, remember, I ignore this part. So she is supposed to play x with 0.6 probability. That's it. And therefore, uh, with 0.4 probability, she's going to play uh, y. Well, so therefore, expected utility of player 1 under beta 1, beta 2, this strategy profile. Well, what is it? Well, simple. I will do exactly the same thing. I'll just calculate the probability of each history occurring, multiply them with the payoffs, and then add them up. That's it. Well, this time the probabilities are different, but the thing is the idea is the same. 0.6 times 0.2. So it's 0.12 times 4 plus 0.6 times 0.8, 0.48 times minus 1 plus 0.4 times 0.2 so 0.08 again minus 1 and then 0.4 times 0.8 uh, 0.32 uh, plus 2 okay so this is 0.48 minus 0.48 cancel out this is 0.64 this is minus 0.08 so this is 0.56 I guess yeah all right, so that's it. This is the continuation payoff of player one uh, under this uh, his, uh, strategy, a uh, behavioral strategy, uh, a continuation strategy that follows history H, which is L. All right, so this is how we calculate all those uh, uh, terms. Uh, so if you change the history to R, that means we're going to concentrate on this part of the game. All right, if you take history, for example, RZ, all right, we can still define those notions, but we are not going to do it because, uh, as I said, eventually we would like to use this concept of continuation game to define subgames. And so we know that in this game there is one, two, three subgames. All right, well, uh, we haven't defined the concept of subgame yet. Let's define it next.